It's not even on like Santa Cruz's website yet, so this might be one of the first out there. It is in the purple color, which is a little hard to see, but it's a, a pretty sick bike. And let's, uh, we'll compare it to the 2021, which we have here with us and see what they've changed and go from there. All right, welcome to the channel. If you've not been here before, review bikes and sometimes shoes and other kind of stuff. And we bike and we run and we uh, dirt bike and stuff. So subscribe, like, comment, whatever you need to do. My name's Chris and welcome to another video. This is the 2022 Santa Cruz 5010 with the Arcade. So this is the 2022. It comes in two colors this year, which is this purple color. I forget the exact color it's called. And then that yellow you saw earlier in the clips. Unfortunately, we won't get too many more close-up shots of that one because it's already sold and gone. Enjoy that, John. It is a sick bike you have. They have not changed the frame. Obviously, last year, from the 2020 models to the 2021s, they did a huge redesign of the frame and went to that BPP suspension. So they haven't changed really anything on this bike, apart from a few parts specs. The biggest thing I've seen change is the suspension, and it seems throughout the entire Santa Cruz range they're leaning more and more on the uh, SRAM kind of RockShox models. So this new one here has a new Pike Select on it and still the 140 mil suspension, same kind of geometry as last year, just changing it up from what was the Fox models on last year's um, to the RockShox. I don't know if it's a supply chain issue or if it's just kind of the way they were leaning anyway, putting more and more SRAM parts on the bike it's easier to buy from them. Who knows, but it's a nice choice. Everyone seems to like the Pike. It makes it really reliable. Um, it's still an amazing fork. Um, they still do have the Fox on this model in the middle here, down at the rear. Um, yeah, it, it's just a really nice bike. Feel of the bike, um, it's actually, it's still pretty lightweight. Overall, nice carbon fiber. This is just a single C model, so they have two types of carbon which one is a double C and the other is just a single C. The double C is the higher end of the two. The single C is technically the heavier ones. You do save a pretty good chunk of weight when you go up to a double C but you also spend a pretty big chunk of money just to get that double carbon frame. With the Santa Cruz models you do not get any sort of knock block thing. They have managed to get a teeny bit of curve at the top of the frame and then they're able to keep it free and clear which is nice. So like I say, they haven't changed too much of it. It's a really nice suspension setup. They still have that BPP, which they switched to from 2020 to 2021. It makes it a super smooth kind of motion and actuation throughout the herd, transition to the kind of small chattery stuff. You don't notice it at all. It just works really, really well. It does add a teeny bit of weight, especially in the C models and the aluminum models, because you have so much going on in that back end but it's overall a nice lightweight full suspension bike. 140 mils on the front, like I said, and 130 in the back make this a very playful bike. Still with the 27 and a half throughout the whole model, they have not done like the Bronson and switched to a mixed wheel size. 
Still that 27 and a half playful fun bike that everyone loves. And as I remember, I think this is still like the best selling model throughout their entire range. The 5010 outsells everything. And um, comes with the SDG uh, cable actuated dropper post, which works really well. It's nice and fast. It, it seems pretty reliable. You know, seemingly dropper posts more and more. You can have some good ones, you can have some bad ones. This one seems like it's a really good, efficient one. WTB seat, which Santa Cruz seems to like. They put on pretty much everything for the past, I don't know how many years. And they are coming with a Maxxis Minion tire, as usual. Pretty much everyone's sticking with the Minion tires. It seems to be the most popular tire on the market. It's pretty aggressive, it's pretty hardcore, but the bikes are so fast and efficient nowadays, I don't think anyone really cares to get that much faster. Plus, more people are wanting that downhill aggressive and to be more forgiving of a bike. Putting a bit beefier on a tire, even though there's a faster rolling option out there, makes it that much funner because you can really hammer the corners really nicely. The suspension setup now is getting easier. Santa Cruz does provide on their website just straight up weight guides to recommend ones, similar to what Trek does. Whereas before, they kind of had complicated setups where you'd have to measure things, like do a proper setup. Just based off your weight gets you a pretty good setup, and I think that's what I'd recommend to everyone. Just look up the weight scales and go off that. They seem to know what they're talking about. Yes, you can get a more dialed one in by measuring all the sags and all the angles and everything, but for the majority of people, just go with the recommended one. Grips on it are the Santa Cruz ones. These are nice, they do have a bit of shape to them. You kind of fingers sit in a bit of a, they kind of sit in like a nice grippy zone and they're super tacky, super grippy, nice and soft though. And they are single sided lock on. Uh, the brakes I like, I mean they are SRAM brakes so they're a little soft feeling. Um, soft modulation all the way through is called. Um, as opposed to SRAM, uh, Shimano which is just on and off kind of braking. These you can kind of ease into which I like. It is a full piston brake setup with the guide. So they stop you really, really well when you want to. It does come with the new 52 tooth um, NX setup on it. So you are gonna shift really nicely. Again, it's mainly just that weight you're kind of compromising when you go to the NX compared to a GX system. And then you could always upgrade the shift lever to a GX and you get very fast shifting in comparison to what the NX has just with that small upgrade. So it's really easy to do. Comes stock with this matchmaker system. It is a little different than previous years. I don't know if this is a newer one, but it, it looks like you can kind of adjust the rotation a little better of um, where the shifters are to the brakes, which is really nice to see. Because um, the other ones, they had a little bit of play, but it didn't really work. This one now, it kind of sits on a rounded shaft, so you can kind of actually adjust it. Um, yeah. As with Santa Cruz's kind of final touches, you have lots of carbon protection, so there's a little protector on the underside here where you might hit logs and stuff as you're hopping them. An over-the-top chainstay protector, which is really nice. And the cables come pretty straight out, so although it comes with some sort of option that you could put stickers on it, they come out so cleanly, I don't think you'll get much cable wear and tear. Same within the middle here. The cables shoot out and shoot back in right where they shouldn't really ever come into contact with anything, which is just really nice. You know, long term, your bike's gonna look really fresh. So we'll bring up the 2021. So this is a large frame in comparison to the medium 5010. As you can see, pretty much the same. It's just power spec switched out. They didn't really change too many of the angles. Um, I bet most of the changes you'd see here is just down to it being a large frame. I think they've realistically taken the same bike, made some minor tweaks to it. The RockShox switch instead of the Fox, I think is a good choice. It seems like many of their part specs are going towards the RockShox. Um, and again, I don't know if that's just availability or if it's a specific choice for them. But these are going to be really hard to come by again this year, so I definitely recommend you uh, hunt them down. And um, yeah, hopefully this might be the first time you've seen these ones. Um, there's just some clips kind of added there showing you off the yellow and the purple, which does look more brown in person, I find. In the right color, it is purple, but it reminds me a little bit of that tall boy um, from, I think, 2020, maybe 2019. But even still, it's even more dark than that. It's not, it's not purple by any means. Um, I think most people are shocked when you tell them it's a purple bike. 
but that's what they call it. Keep an eye on the website. They will assume we release them because we've shipped, we've had them shipped to us and we have more yellow coming. So that's kind of cool. Like I dig the yellow color. And yeah, so this just quick kind of look at the, the new one and uh, we'll keep going. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Chris is leaving, or I don't know, whatever. Good luck, guys.